talking with uh, with Rudolf Giuliani. Um, you just saying during the break that you, in the couple weeks after the campaign, you began to realize how weary you m were, or how high up you get right. in a thing like yeah. that. Um, it, it took about two or three days to even realize how tired I was. Yeah. Um, and then you realize that it's been months and months and months since you had a day off, and uh, a lot of a lot of uh, nights in which you missed any kind of sleep or any kind of really meaningful sleep. And it uh, yeah. actually it takes two or three weeks to really start to feel like normal again. Um, from what you said in the last segment, you, you still can be irked by the nature of some of the campaigning against you. The, w the ones that stung again were what? The one about your earlier sure, marriage? Sure, and uh, sort of intruding into things that, um, that you would think have nothing at all to do with being mayor, including religion and your religious beliefs and your mm -hmm. conscience and, uh, and things that uh, I thought got very, very intrusive. My, my policy was I'd answer every question. A few times I would say to reporters, do you really want to ask that question? I'll, I'll, a I'll answer it if you want me to. Yeah. And because I don't want you to think I have anything to hide because I don't. Right. But do you really want to ask me about my first marriage or annulments or that sort of thing? Uh, mm -hmm. Since those are really religious things. But they would go ahead yeah. and ask anyway and I would answer. But isn't it, it, it's a little disingenuous to say if politicians' religious beliefs have nothing to do with his no, I think they do, but I think how, how far you go intruding into someone's life ah. is a, uh, it's mm -hmm. a mistake that we're making in America right now. Well, if we were during the campaign and I were assigned to get your position on abortion, which as Perfectly. far as I read it shifted once or twice, uh, I would, uh, or something let's say specifically like there's a woman in California, a legislator, who came out pro-abortion and the Catholic Church s denies her communion. Are they right or wrong? I think you're right to ask somebody's position on abortion, and, I, and, uh, and that's a public position. It's something you have, you have to vote on if you're a legislator. Mm -hmm. If you're a mayor, it's something you have to speak out on. I never felt that that was uh, intrusive to ask me that. Uh, as far as my relationship to my church over that position, uh, that's a little bit intrusive. And uh, I mean, I've been a public official a long time. I know the difference between being a public official and being a member of a church. One has never intruded into the other, and you would think people could take you at your word. For now, that. then, if, if I was that reporter asking that question, at what point did I become intrusive when I ask you whether you think the Catholic Church is right to deny that woman communion? Yeah, Am that, I prying? Sure. There, my, uh, In other words, you're not willing to answer <laughs> the question, are you? No, what I would do is I would suggest to the person that uh, I'm not a priest and I'm not a, a theologian, so my view on this is not worth very much, but if you want it, I'll tell you what my view is. Go ahead. What the hell? Uh, I think that... Uh, church has to recognize that public officials have to make decisions mm -hmm. uh, governing a large, large group of people, many of whom aren't Catholics. And you have to, as a public official mm -hmm. or a, a potential public official, you've got to take that into consideration. A priest doesn't have to uh, take that into consideration. So that yeah. uh, if you're going to govern people who feel as a matter of conscience that abortion is right mm -hmm. and people who feel as a matter of conscience that abortion is wrong, you've got to find a middle ground that permits both of those views uh, to get uh, legitimacy. Mm -hmm. It's still hard to see how you can divide yourself that way, but I guess it has to be done. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, during the break, we, we talk, I mean, uh, in the last segment, we were talking about the, um, the problem for a religious candidate having to uh, divide the thought, so to speak, about things. Now, o on the abortion issue, what was perceived as your shifting was what again? <laughs> it really wasn't. Uh, uh, that much of a shifting. It was uh, maybe because it happened in the middle of a campaign. My uh, personal position on abortion has always been that whatever your religious beliefs or whatever advice you would give to someone, ultimately a woman has to make a choice and you've got to support that. Even if, even if you might advise her, well, maybe it'd be better to have the baby. So if you take that personal position and you reflect it publicly, it becomes a pro-choice position Mm -hmm. However, one where if I were making the choice, maybe I would advise uh, that it would be better to have the baby. Ultimately, if a woman makes the decision yeah. that she wants to have an abortion, I think she has to have the right to make that decision about her own body, realizing how difficult that is. And does that mean you're of two minds on the subject or of one mind? No, it means it's a very, very complex yeah. issue that, uh, I mean, it, 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 it might be difficult, but if people think a little bit, this isn't uh, so hard, that you can be pro-choice, but personally feel that the better option would be not to have an abortion. Ultimately, you've got to let each okay. woman decide it yeah, for yeah. herself, however. Suppose the man who resides 
in the house behind St. Patrick's called you during the campaign and says, if you say any more things that seem to be pro-abortion, I'm going to fix you and I'm going to deny this phone call. Well, that, uh, that misunderstands the role of the church yeah. and of government in America and of the it First It strikes Amendment. me that the late Cardinal Spellman would be capable of almost uh, but then any sleaziness, let alone that one. Then you've got to have the, uh, you've got to have the understanding of what democracy is all about in America and the American uh, Constitution. And remind him of that? My obligation as a public official is to everyone, not just to Catholics. It's to everyone. Yeah. I don't know why I'm so hard on Cardinal Spellman, except <laughs> that I, there was so little to admire in him and some of the things he did were really quite amazing. Has there ever been a good book about him? Did you know, did you know him? I didn't know. I didn't know him, except yeah. as, a, as a young student. Uh, he probably came to my college at one point or other. I don't, I don't uh, oh. think he did, but I didn't know him personally in any way. Do we, sti we st apparently still get this sort of thing. In Kazan's book, he talked about the movie Baby Doll, and when it came out, certain priests stood in the lobbies and took the names of people who went in to see it because it had they'd been forbidden to see it. That seems almost like 100 years ago, and yet it was, <laughs> it was not. Um, just in the moment remaining, uh, the idea of politics obviously appeals to you, and you seem it's quite clear you're going to be back. Um, is one of the appeals the fact that someday you could get $2 million for a five-day trip to Japan? <laughs> uh, no. Or maybe even closer? No, actually, uh, actually it's easier to do that uh, outside of politics. As a lawyer or as a businessman, anyone who is attracted to politics for money is looking at the wrong uh, business. Really? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, being a lawyer in private practice or being in business, you're going to make a lot more money uh, than you are in politics. I think the attraction of politics or the the, the correct attraction of politics should be that it gives you a real satisfaction helping people. It, it allows you to build something that would be for nice. other people. In the 10 seconds remaining, what job would you like Mayor Dinkins to appoint you to? Uh, Seriously. I'm, uh, I'm in private life right now. I'm not looking for a job. And, uh, you mean I, you can't be had? I know I can't be had. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that memorable quote, Rudolph Giuliani, thank you for being here. We're thank out you, of time. Dan. We'll see you next time. <laughs> so long.